right, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? It's kind of dark out there. Did you guys have a good Christmas? Good, chill, relaxed, exciting? Yeah, don't answer. It's okay, actually. <laughs> Too many questions at once. Um, we had a great Christmas, and it felt really simple, which was felt really nice. It was like less presents than usual, really chill and relaxed. And the kids are at the age where they're, we're all like doing a, a board game together now, which is, is a pretty cool kid stage. I'd never heard about that stage before. You know, you hear about like toddler stage and teenager, but we've hit this board game stage and we're really enjoying it. So we had a good time. We played Ticket to Ride. Anybody play that before? It's a good one. Highly recommend it. And uh, we had an excellent time. So it is, um, it's good to be here this morning, and I'm glad Henry kind of kicked off my message with mentioning Psalm 27. I want to speak on Psalm 27 this morning, and it's something that's been on my heart uh, for a few months. And, and I feel like um, coming into a new year, it's always good to uh, pro- look back and, and just see what the Lord has been speaking to you for this last year. Maybe he spoke some promises to you. Maybe he gave you some direction earlier in the year. And it's always good when you come to an end of the year. Or it it doesn't really matter when it is, truly. Because, I mean, as a ministry, we start our ministry year uh, in in August. And it goes the year round. And there's the Jewish New Year. I mean, there's all types of ways that you could take time throughout the year to... To look back, reflect, and then look forward. So, but this is a great opportunity because it's a calendar year. So I encourage you to do it. And I've been doing that um, the last few weeks. And I've been really, I, I think it's great to do because oftentimes you miss what the Lord has been saying because he is faithful to speak. Amen. But sometimes we are not faithful to remember. But when we go back and we look at our journals, we, we look at what we've written down. Maybe someone's given you a prophetic word. Maybe there's some scriptures that the Lord's been speaking to your heart. It's always really good to go back and see what those things are. And for us, um, you know, we've been, I've been doing that, and I've really been struck by the Lord's faithfulness over this last year. And we've seen him start to fulfill some promises. We've, started, we've seen him um, bring just restoration, open doors, direction, and his amazing peace. And I'm so thankful for that. But I feel like I could have missed it if I didn't go back and look at those things. Because sometimes when a promise starts to get fulfilled, you're like, great, this is, this is great. On to the next thing. It can be very easy to just move on yeah. instead of saying, wow, Lord, actually, this is something that you promised. This is something you said, and you fulfilled your promise. And as you give him thanks for what he's, he's done, he's going to bring the next thing into your life. Because we need to be people yeah. of remembrance. Amen. Yeah. People of remembrance. And um, so a couple of things that he's shown me these last, this last year, and especially the last six months, is first of all, I just mentioned his faithfulness, of which we are so thankful for. And then um, two major things for me is he's shown me that it's important for us. And I believe he's been showing me the last six months, but I really believe it's for this next year, for 2024, that I need to be someone who is cultivating hunger in my life, more hunger for the Lord. And I feel like... It's also for this church that we need to be a church who's cultivating hunger for God in our lives. Amen. And the way we do that is with a renewed focus on the Lord. And that's why we're going to be looking at Psalm 27 and looking at the one thing. And another thing is contending for an open heaven. And that can sound a little weird, but it's not. If you look all throughout your scriptures, it's, it's, it's there. If you look, you see Jacob when he, he has a dream and he, and he dreams about this ladder to heaven and about the angels ascending and descending. And so simply to me, an, an open heaven means a place where we hear the Lord's voice so clearly. Amen. When we, ha- we see in the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, people had encounters with, encounters with the Lord. And that is a place of an open heaven to me. That's a place where we hear the Lord's voice, where we feel his direction and we feel the Lordship of Jesus. We know we're in an open heaven when we feel our focus is on him and we feel the Lordship so clearly. And so for both of these things, the key is worship. 
The key is to be a worshiping people. The key is to be a worshiping church. And so I believe that's what God has called us to be is we are a worshiping church, but there's more. Amen. Yeah. There's more to step into. There's more to press into. There's more hunger to cultivate. Every single morning we should be cultivating more hunger and thirst for the presence of Jesus. Every single day we should be longing for the Lord, desiring to hear his voice and desiring to feel his lordship over every part of our lives. Amen. Every part, family, work, hobbies, we want to experience his lordship. And so Psalm 27 really highlights these things. Um, and I want, to, uh, I want to read it to you. But I was reminded too, you know, there's the Logos and the Rhema. And we're going to be literally reading the Logos, the word of God. But I just pray this morning that the Lord just imparts revelation to you, the rhema. The rhema is when the word comes alive on the inside, when you feel that um, confirmation from the Holy Spirit, from what he's been speaking to you and what he's speaking to you this morning. And so let that revelation be stirred up in you, that there's, there's direction for you, that there is a word for you in what we're looking at. Uh, maybe you already got it during the worship time. Maybe you're going to get it this week in the open and the close. But there is a word. There is a rhema word, a revelation word. And I believe it's going to come alive in our spirits, give us excitement and joy, and help us to move forward. Amen. Yeah. I believe it's a year to move forward. There's momentum taking place. And so allow the revelation of the Lord to be stirred up inside of you. So we're going to read the psalm together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At the sacred tent, I will sacrifice, sacrifice with shouts of joy and sing and make music to the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord God. We thank you for this year that has gone past. And we just want to give you thanks for your faithfulness. Even right now, just to open up your, your heart to the Lord and just start to, in your own mind, just start to thank him for his faithfulness this past year. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you have not left our sides. Lord, you've been with us whether we've been in a valley season or whether we've been in a mountain season. We thank you that you are faithful, Lord. You are always speaking, and I just pray for open ears. Let us be a body, a church who has open spiritual ears, Lord God. Hearts of flesh to perceive you, Lord God, to recognize you, to respond to you. And Lord, bless this word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so verse one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So David starts the psalm with a reminder. He's reminding himself that the Lord is his light and his salvation. That he is the stronghold of his life. Who should he be afraid of? And David was often in a place of being afraid. He was often in a place of being attacked. He was often under a lot of pressure. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. And it's great to see the example of David's life because it's extreme, you know, like there's a lot of crazy things that take place. I don't think any of our lives are as crazy as his. So it's good to look at that and say, okay, if David could come to the Lord in his circumstances, we can come to the Lord in our circumstances and we can remind ourselves that the Lord is our strength. Amen. The Lord is our salvation. One translation says that he is our fortress. It says he is the stronghold of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? So I believe it's important to remind ourselves of who God is and who we are in him. It starts off with the Lord is my light and my salvation. We need to remind ourselves that we are a saved people. Amen. Come on. It's so easy to go through life and go through your year and your week and forget who you are. We're not like the world. 
We've been saved. We've been delivered. We've been set free. Amen. We are a, a, a new creation in Christ Jesus, a literal new creation. And I believe that this year we're going to start to feel like a new creation. Maybe you feel like you've been stuck. Maybe you feel like you're not even very different from when before you were saved and now. But there should be a difference, and there is a difference. And I believe that we need to remind ourselves that the Lord is our light, and he is our salvation, and we are something brand new. Yeah. It says in 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen people. So you are chosen. Amen? You are chosen. You're a royal priesthood. I've been trying to dive into what does it mean to be a, a royal priesthood. Man, there's a lot in it. There's a type and a shadow we can read in the Old Testament of what it means to be a priesthood. But it means that we're ministering to the Lord. We have access to God. We have access to the holies of holies. Amen? the very presence of the Lord, and we have the anointing by the Holy Spirit to minister to people. So we all have an opportunity to minister as a priesthood. It might just be in your home to your kids, and that is a privilege. That is more than enough. It might be in your workplace as well. It might be uh, in other things that God has called you to do, maybe in the business realm or whatever it is, but you are a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. We don't have to be entrapped by sin. We don't have to be filled with condemnation, but we are a holy nation. Amen. That renewing that God has done in our spirits. He's made us brand new. You're God's special possession. We're possessed by the Lord. We're possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you feel possessed? This is a year where we're going to feel a greater belonging to the Lord. Amen. Just surrender. I encourage you. Sometimes it just takes a simple surrender. Say, Lord, I belong to you first and foremost, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So we're all these things so that we may declare the praises of him. This will be a theme that will keep coming up in this message, but we are a people called to praise and to worship. And even though that sometimes doesn't feel like it should be a priority in our lives, there's a lot going on, it sometimes feels like something weak to do or something silly or whatever, but I can just attest, you know, even in my own experience these last two years when I've had some low seasons of being sick or whatever we've gone through, praise and worship was the key. Even when we did not feel like it, even when we physically sometimes could not do it, there was still a call, it was a sacrifice to praise and it's the thing that will transform us. It's like an act of faith, praise and worship, because sometimes you don't feel like it. It's an act of faith that pleases the Lord. And sometimes it feels like a sacrifice. Like, man, I don't want to lift my hands. I don't want to kneel. But those are actually biblical words for worship, that there's these, um, these words in the Hebrew and even in, uh, in, in the Greek that, that are not just praise and worship, but they describe physical actions that we can take and I believe they're acts of faith that please the Lord. And they're also positions of humility that align ourselves underneath the Lordship of Jesus. And there's power in them. I want to encourage you. Sometimes the foolish things of the world are, are mighty in the Lord. Amen. So take a posture this year of worship. As you remember your salvation, that you're a chosen people, a royal priest and a holy nation, possessed by God. Know that you are all those things to declare his praise because he's called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So we now are people with power and with purpose. No more wasting our time or potential. Amen. I've also been feeling as I read this, I, I, I feel that the Lord is, um, this is kind of a prophetic message, to be honest. There's a lot in here that I, like I said, I've been looking back on what the Lord has been speaking, and I'm looking forward about what I need to take as, as a priority into the new year. So it's going to be very prophetic. And um, I felt, too, that God is releasing us from guilt. He's changing mindsets. Many of us, maybe you, you know you're saved, you know the Lord, but you've been carrying guilt and, and, and mindsets that the Lord wants to set you free of. And I've, many of us have been bogged down with guilt, and I believe the Lord is saying it's time to renew your mind. I love what Rob Long said a, maybe a couple weeks ago, but he said, the Lord was taking me, and he's a man of God, isn't he? He's an awesome man of God. 
And he was saying that the night before, the Lord was taking him through some deliverance. And I believe the Lord wants to take us through deliverance. Sometimes it's like the onion, you know, he's peeling off these layers of things. Maybe we've repented of things. Maybe we've had some trauma in the, our early life. And sometimes it's like the, the onion, he just, God is peeling off those layers because sometimes it's a little too much to just do it all at once. And for me, I felt the same thing. He, I felt the Lord remind me of some things that took place when I was a kid. And it was a teacher who had, through some severe disciplinary actions, had put a mindset into me of, of guilt, like I would, I'd done something wrong. And the Lord highlighted this, and I realized, wow, Lord, I've been carrying this low level, like I've done something wrong, I'm about, I'm about to get in trouble. This punishment mindset. A lot of us carry this punishment mindset towards the Lord, and I really feel he wants to speak to that, and he wants to deliver you from that. He punished Jesus on the cross, amen? Jesus took all of our punishment, and so we're unpunishable now. We're washed by the blood of Jesus. We are a new creation. And we might sin, but we can ask for forgiveness. And it says the righteous rise. Even though they fall, they rise seven times. We can rise up and continue on. But I really feel like it's been a hindrance for many of us. And carrying these mindsets of guilt or punishment can be a weight that the Lord wants you just to cut free of and to get rid of. So there's uh, maybe some weights and sins that... The Lord is helping us to be free of this year. So there's freedom. There's freedom moving forward. And the key is God's word. We have to be in the Lord's word because that will renew your mind. It will give you the mindset that you need. So it's a year of the word. And in January is such a perfect time. We're all coming out of the fog of Christmas. I'm coming out of the fog of way too much eggnog. I realize that I am a huge fan of homemade eggnog. I've been having that store-bought stuff before. Man, that stuff is, like, disgusting compared to homemade eggnog. And I'm thankful to Leslie's family who introduced me to this, unless they made some. But I definitely went overboard this year. Not alcoholic, but um, very creamy and very rich. And so we're coming out of this fog of Christmas and indulgence. And the Lord's calling us to a place of, of prayer and His Word in this, this month. I'm excited. Amen. I had a hunger for eggnog, but I'm turning that into a hunger and thirst for God's word and for, and for his presence. Yeah. And so it's a good time. It's a good theme to do that. But um, one more thing of verse one. I love how it says the Lord is the stronghold of my life. I remember reading that a few years ago and saying, God, that is so good because sometimes we battle with strongholds in our lives. Things that maybe your parents dealt with that have been passed down to you. Maybe it's mindsets, maybe it's some addiction or, or a cycle. But this is such a powerful scripture to say when you're facing those things, when you're facing those doubts or you're, you're, you're in that same place you were before and you're like, how am I here again? Just declare the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Amen. He is my fortress. He is my stronghold. And he's bringing amazing freedom this year. Let's look at verse 2 and 3. It says, when the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear, though war breaks out against me. David is writing from a place of serious experience right here. He had experienced persecution within his family, his brothers, Attempted murder by his king, the one he served. War, continual war, betrayal, family infighting, temptation, sin. David knew the attack of the enemy. He knew, tr he knew trials. But I think it's powerful to remember how did David fight his battles. He wasn't remembered as the great warrior of Israel. He wasn't remembered as the wise king of Israel. He was remembered as, do you, do you guys remember what he was remembered as? The sweet psalmist of Israel, the worshiper of Israel. That's how David fought his battles, amen? He would strengthen himself in the Lord. He would go to the Lord. He would prioritize the most important thing that would bring breakthrough, that would bring peace, that would bring clarity to his situation, and he would do that. That's how he fought his battles. But he says, when the wicked advance against me, he knew that it wasn't a if, but it was a when. It was going to happen. 
And I feel a lot of us go through life surprised. I know it's, I, it happens to me. You go through life surprised with the trials that come your way, with the temptation. It says temptation will come. We get surprised with, you know, the valley seasons, but it says the Lord will be with us in the valley. And unfortunately, because we don't like it as humans, we like an easy time where we're always avoiding pain. We're avoiding the gym. We're avoiding the discipline. It's a hard thing to do, but it's something that we need to know is coming no matter what. It says in James 1, 2 to 3, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And so it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. We need to remember that the enemy is prowling around. One Peter says, be alert and of sober mind. The enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So he's calling us to be a people who are ready. The battle is coming. 2024, unfortunately, I'm sorry, there's going to be challenges. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but there's going to be challenges for you this year. You're going to need your armor. Amen? Yeah. You're going to need the, the word of the Lord. Yeah. You're going to need to be meditating in God's word. You're going to need to be at our worship nights. You're going to need to be worshiping in the morning. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, we don't get a break we got to stay in the battle. Continually in the Word, Paul talks about that we're athletes, we're soldiers, we're farmers. They're, they're always working. They're always ready. That's what this life is. Yeah. It's a place of challenge. Athletes know this. I remember when I was uh, you know, somewhat of an athlete when I was younger. And, um, you know, we're trying to get into college and, and swimming all the time. And it was terrible. It was boring. I hated it. Staring at the bottom of the pool for hours every single day. And unfortunately, that conflicted with my desire to be a good skateboarder, which I was terrible at. And I would continually injure myself on the skateboard, and it would put me out for two weeks. And then it would put me out for two months. And those, those times away from training in the pool would really set you back. Athletes know even two weeks away from your training regimen when you're preparing for something is a big setback. Yeah. And so we need to be those who are focused. We need to be those who are, are ready. Beck was talking about the 10 virgins. I was looking at that too. And, and they were ready, amen. They were continually prepared for the return of the Lord. They had to be ready. And those who were foolish, who weren't ready, they were caught unawares. And, um, you know, this, unfortunately, there's no excuse. I got to say, I love being married, but there's a couple things I missed from my bachelor life. And that just was like my own space my own room, just to spend time with the Lord, hours in his presence, worshiping him. And now I find myself in a very cute house. It's very, very small. And there's no office and there's no space to myself and there's no place to just go in. But I felt like the Lord, and I, you know, I'm like, Lord, that's why I haven't been in your presence as much. That's why, that's why I haven't been worshiping you. You need to give me an office with a leather couch and a bookshelf and just all the cool things. But I felt the Lord just rebuke me and say, there's no excuse. Get up early. Find a way. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Amen. And that's like life. You're, you're always going to be faced with challenges. You're never going to have perfect circumstances. And it's good. It is excellent. Paul, um, James said, count it an opportunity for great joy. You're going to have a chance to grow. You're going to have a chance to grow in your strength, in your character. So God's calling us to be prepared. 2024, it's an election year, right? There's going to be challenges. There's going to be interesting things going on. And I really believe the Lord is saying, no matter what goes on, focus on him. Be prepared in your spirit. Don't fight the fleshly battles. They're fruitless. They're not going to take us anywhere good. But be in the spirit and the Lord will show you the battles to fight. Amen. The Lord will show you the things to focus on. And I understand, you know, many of us have been, Leslie and I, we've had years of difficult, difficult season of, you know, we would read a prophetic word and it's like, oh man, I'm just sick of these prophetic words that are encouraging because we've had season after season of just difficulty. 
And it can wear on you to a place where sometimes you feel like you want to give up. And I feel many of us have been in a place of despair, but I feel like it's the Lord is encouraging. If you've been in a place of despair, just know that the Lord is encouraging this in this season. And it says in, um, in one translation of verse 1 that the Lord is our fortress. And I love that image of the Lord being our fortress, that we can run to him. You know, I just imagine like the peasants in the huts, and then there's like the fortress on the hill. And where when the battle comes, we can run to the Lord. We can run to the fortress, and it's got the thick walls, and that's amazing. And it's got the armories, it's got weapons, and it's got everything we need. But another really cool thing about fortresses is they're usually in high places. And so that gives you a great perspective for the battle and for the enemy. And I believe the Lord is calling us to him as our fortress. And another thing I keep hearing is come up here, come up here. And I've just been seeing like John on the island of Patmos in Revelation. And the Lord is saying, come up here. And I believe the Lord is calling us to a place of ascension prayer. That's another word that just came up. It was a word from a friend of ours from many years ago. And it's crazy because I was looking in my notes for something else. And this word pops up as the top hit. And I'm like, what? Word from Sylvie. Like, that's not what I was looking up. And it was all about the Lord is calling us to ascension prayer. He's calling us to focus on him. And that simply means, you know, the Lord's calling us to a place of gazing on him and praying. And, and the Lord is going to say, come up here. And in our spirits, you know, because we're seated in heavenly places, the Lord's going to give us that perspective of being in his fortress. He's going to give us that higher ground perspective to see what's going on. It's going to give us clarity for what God has called us to. It's going to give us clarity of the schemes of the enemy. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of perspective. You can see the schemes of the enemy. It's like, oh, I see the schemes of the enemy. And he's defeated, amen? They're mostly just darkness, lies, trickery. When you get that perspective of the Lord, you can see what the enemy is doing. You can easily rise above it. Those things don't matter anymore. They can't reach you when you make the Lord your fortress. And so it's a come up here year. That should be easy to remember. Come, on. come up here year. David strengthened himself in the Lord. He worshiped the Lord. And I love it because um, I wanted to find that like famous old drawing of David holding the head of the giant. Have you guys ever seen that? I love that one. I should have found it. He strengthened himself up to the point where he had an appetite for the blood of giants. He had an appetite for the head of giants. Isn't that crazy? The whole of Israel is deathly scared of Goliath. He's taunting them. The enemy is taunting Israel. He's taunting them, telling them their God is weak. But David had been in the sheep fields. He'd been praising the Lord. He'd been, been preparing with his battles with the lion, the bear, and he came and he said, no way, I have an appetite for the head of a giant. I have an appetite for the blood of giants. And David went in there and he slew that giant by the power of the Lord. Come on, I think this is a year where giants are gonna fall. We're gonna see giants fall, things that have taunted you, things that have mocked God in your life, no more. We say no more. And I believe that this is a year. Come on, stir yourself up. Don't doubt right now. I can sense maybe some of us are doubting. And the Lord is saying giants are going to fall. If he could do it then, he's going to do it again in your life. Amen. You are a child of God. Go back to your identity in Christ. You are his possession. And those giants cannot taunt anymore. So develop. You know, I've, I've felt this before. Even on our honeymoon, the enemy tried to attack us. We were on the north shore of um, Kauai for a honeymoon, and we just got this, this, the main hotel was closed, we were in like this other place that wasn't that great, and there was a weird spiritual atmosphere, and I just felt in the middle of the night such an oppression, such a heaviness, and luckily I had my guitar, you don't need a guitar to worship, but I grabbed my guitar, and I just started worshiping in that place, and it was like, oh man, it got heavier, and I just kept worshiping and kept worshiping because I had an appetite to see that giant move. Kept worshiping and boom, breakthrough. The air cleared. I felt the peace of the Lord descend. 
come on, the, the enemy's not going to steal my honeymoon. And, uh, and I felt the peace of the Lord descend. Not only that, but the Lord started to speak to me. Because when we're in that place of an open heaven, the Lord is speaking. He is our best friend, amen. He's always speaking. And in that place, he spoke. But the key is to rise up. When Joshua, when Moses died, Joshua was about to enter the promised land. And I love Joshua 1 because, I mean, basically the Lord is speaking to Joshua. He's saying, be strong and courageous. Again, he says, be strong and very courageous. And then later he says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. The Lord was literally commanding him to be strong and to be courageous. And he's speaking to you this morning, be strong, be courageous. You are strong and you are courageous. The second thing out of that passage is that the Lord is saying, follow my words carefully. There's basically two messages from that, that, that passage where the Lord is speaking to Joshua. It's be strong and courageous and stay in my word. Meditate in my word. Don't depart to the left or the right from my word because this is what's going to keep you safe. If you have an appetite for the blood of giants, you're going to need God's word. Amen. Not our own foolish ideas, but God's wisdom. And so that's going to be the thing that guides us this year. Verse 4 says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I, may, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze in the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. I love this verse. It's, it's a life verse for me. And um, it just reminded me of, of the encounter that I had with the Lord in, um, in Dallas. And I, I, I think I shared this last time, but I'm going to repeat some of it. And um, when I was in that place, I felt strong. I think the, the reason why I want to repeat this is because um, since that time, I've been gathering with some of our worship leaders in a connect group, and we've been pursuing the Lord. And it's something that's come up continually over and over, that the Lord is calling us to be, to be a people who are cultivating a greater hunger for the Lord. Because when I was in that place, I walked in, and I was like, whoa, I'm just, I'm hearing the voice of the Lord. It feels, it feels like what Jacob experienced, where he's like, is this the gateway to, the, the, the stairway to heaven? This is, the, this is Bethel. This is the place where the Lord is. And I was like, this is the place where the Lord is. And I realized that it's not just one special place, these portholes. It's not these portholes, but it's that's been cultivated there in that prayer room. But that there was a, a hunger in that place. That there was a humility in that place. That there were those who were pursuing the Lord. In the place where we cultivate a hunger, the Lord is going to show up. Yeah. Amen. The Lord right. is going to speak. David said, I will seek your face to gaze on your beauty. Seek you. It's an active seeking. It's a thing of hunger. And what's so powerful is when we, when we pursue the Lord with all our hearts. I mean, it's good to come in here with problems, with issues, because the Lord is going to meet you there. But I think he's calling us beyond that, that we don't always come in with issues. And if, we, if we're good this week, then we're coming in for, our, for social connection, and, and that's not bad either. But I think the Lord's calling us to something greater. I mean, he's calling us to a hungering and a seeking and a worshiping. And when we come into one accord like that as a church, that's when we start to see something shift and change that's significant in our lives, in our city. Amen. We want this to be a place that's cultivated in open heaven, the presence of the Lord. So that when people walk in, when you walk in, you're hearing his voice. You're feeling his peace. When you're at home, cultivating that place of worship is going to create a peaceful home. It's going to create clarity and direction for you and your spouse. It's going to provide a place of discipleship for your children. Even the place of your work, I was convicted this week. I was like, Lord, I want to I wanna pursue this not just on Sundays. I want to I wanna see an open heaven right here. Lord, you were here in this space, that space. All of these places, you are here. And I just simply want to say, Lord, I turn my desire to you. It's a simple turning. Sometimes we're just so busy in what's going on. We're so busy in, in the conversation or, or, or whatever it is. But sometimes it's just simply 
turning that internal gaze towards the Lord. And then we start to sense the Lord's presence. And we start to maybe have a more edifying conversation or we have an encouragement for somebody else or we just sense him, amen, sense his friendship. I want to just emphasize that the Lord is, is seeking through all this, it's, it's a friendship with you. It's, it's a desire to know you more just as your desire to know him more is growing. Yeah. And just know that as your desire is growing, you can't outgrow his desire to know you and to love you and pursue you. And so I believe that God is calling us to be a church who is pursuing him. And um, I, when I was in that place too, in that prayer room, I, I, felt, I felt this awesome conviction because, man, conviction is awesome. And, uh, and I'd shared this before, but my friend who was there, who had an encounter with Jesus, who was not saved, he, he was like, man, it was like meeting the most non-judgmental judge. He's like, it just felt like I wanted to get rid of these things that was such a waste of time, was such a distraction. And I felt this conviction like I could almost just see it so clearly. I could see Bellingham. I could see us. I could see me. And I could see that we're so busy. We're so, so busy. And it's not a sin to be busy. We have responsibilities. We have family. We have work. We have all these things. We, have, we are busy people. And I felt like the Lord said, it's not a sin. It's, a, it's okay. But know that there is something more. I'm pretty sure David was a busy guy. None of us are running a kingdom. None of us are fighting the Philistines. <laughs> None of us are dealing with, I don't know how many wives and concubines he had. I mean, it was crazy. It's crazy stuff. And um, so we're not even as busy as David, but David said, there's one thing. There's one thing of all of these things that I'm doing, of all of these things that I'm responsible for, of all of these, these things going on, there's one thing, there's one thing that I seek and I pursue above all else. And I believe he knew the key and the secret that when we pursue the one thing, the Lord knows about our responsibilities. He knows about our priorities and he's going to set all those things in order. Sometimes when we're juggling the chaos of life, we just need to go back to that one thing, and then the Lord will order those things. All of a sudden, item B is going to get like sorted out by itself. And then item C, you're like, oh, I just need to do that. Boom. That's figured out. Item D, you know, those things, they start to get ordered underneath the Lord. And I love that visual of when, when the Holy Spirit, when, when creation was, was happening, was taking place, that the Holy Spirit hovered over it, and he brought order out of chaos and when we allow the Holy Spirit to hover over our lives, over our priorities, he's going to bring order out of chaos because he is a God of peace. Amen. He's a God of order. Allow the Holy Spirit into that place this year. There's so many things that we are busy with, but let's prioritize his presence. Let's make that sacrifice this year. It's the same as giving. It's the principles of the kingdom. It's upside down. It's, it's hard to comprehend with your natural mind. You know, the seed, the seed time and harvest, the Lord knows what he is doing. So trust him. Trust him with your priority. Trust him with your time. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with all those things. Let him order it according to his kingdom and his wisdom. And then I just want to read uh, verse 6b. It says, at his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. You know, when we're in the presence of the Lord, when we're gazing on him, when we're focusing on him, um, even in our lives, you know, as we start to just turn, make that turn towards the Lord, that spiritual, those spiritual eyes, just turning it towards him. In any given moment, we're, we're beholding him. We're becoming conscious of his ever abiding presence. We're turning our, our, our mind, our heart towards him. And then when we're in that place, what you will find, because you see it over and over again in scriptures, you see it over and over again in the Psalms, and as we put our consciousness on the Lord's presence, who's always with us, is going to be a response that comes out of us, of worship, of praise, of thanksgiving, of joy. 
Worship is our response to a consciousness of God's presence in our life. And that's when you're going to start to see that worship come naturally, just an overflow. And I believe that this is a year for the overflow, that there sometimes is a sacrifice of praise we have to engage in um, and do that. But I believe that this is going to be, as we spend time gazing on him, as we spend time in his word, as men and women of God, we're going to start to see the Lord just fill us up. As you thirst and hunger for the Lord, he's going to fill you up. And I believe that this is a year to live out of that overflow of his presence. No matter the trials and the tests, and the temptations that come, it's a year to live out of the overflow. Also, know that as we do that, we're going to see an open heaven in this church, in our lives. We're going to see an atmosphere where the lordship of Jesus is evident and clear. That's the goal. Amen. It's not signs, wonders, gold dust, whatever. It's the lordship of Jesus first and foremost, and then he can do whatever he wants underneath that. But when we feel the lordship of Jesus, that's when we know we're living in a place of an, of an open heaven as God has designed us to live in a place of communion. Feeling his lordship. When we feel the lordship, I love Acts because it's the lordship of Jesus. It's a continuation because the Lord was there. He was with them. There was signs, wonders, miracles. It was powerful. <clears throat> he left. He went to heaven. They were in disarray until the Holy Spirit came. And then it was the continuation of the lordship of Jesus on earth through his disciples, through his apostles. And I believe that as we come into a place of being empowered by the Holy Spirit under his lordship and direction, we will start to see the things that we saw in the book of Acts. Amen. Firstly, a revelation of Jesus, a revelation of Jesus. When we come into this place, when we wake up in the morning, do we have a true revelation of Jesus and his lordship? We're going to start to see salvation take place and then transformation take place. We're going to see miracles and power. We're going to see church growth. Get ready. We're going to see all throughout the city, every church, we're going to see church growth. Amen. Amen. So maybe you got to put, put up your hand up to volunteer, or maybe you got to do something to contribute to where the, where God is taking us. It's not just about numbers. It's about seeing the church expand like they saw in the book of Acts, that it would grow, that more people would come to the knowledge of Jesus, that more people would come to know him. So I, I just exhort you to contend in your home for this, contend in all your environments. I just want to invite the, the worship team up. We're going to close here in a minute, but I want to just recap quickly. Remember who God is. And remember who you are in him. Be prepared and sober-minded. I don't know if I read that scripture before, but I want to read it now. Be alert. In 1 Peter 5, it says, be alert and of sober mind. Oh, I think I did, but I want to read it again. Be alert and of a sober mind. Allow the Lord to develop courage in you to see those giants removed. And let's pursue the one thing this year. And then eliminate those distractions. Let's just stand up together. And um, we're going to sing in a minute. Um, I just felt a couple things as we close that I feel there's a breakthrough for many of us this morning to experience the nearness of Jesus. Some of us have felt very far away from the Lord, or we have felt like the Lord is far away from us no matter what we do. But I feel that this morning there is a breakthrough in feeling the nearness of Jesus, experiencing his presence. Amen. And so let's just close our eyes and we're going to pray. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, we just turn our eyes towards you this morning. 
We set our gaze on you. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving right now in this room. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're ministering to hearts right now. We just see you unlocking some hearts that have been closed. The Lord has the key to unlock some things in your heart. And maybe you've been afraid about what's behind that door. You, you don't want anyone to see what's behind that door. There's brokenness. There's, there's darkness. But the Lord has your number. The Lord has the key to that door I see this morning. I just encourage you to invite him into those places in your heart that have been broken, that have been hidden. Come up here. There's no hiddenness in our relationship with the Lord. There's no room for compartmentalizing your heart. And so right now, Holy Spirit, I think that you are coming into every place in our heart that's been broken, that's been divided, that's been filled with darkness, Lord God, or brokenness, and you are bringing healing, healing now in Jesus' mighty name. I think that you're pouring your living water, Lord. You're, you're pouring your water over those places. You're washing. You're washing, God, by your word. As we renew our mind in your word, you're washing, washing those places of brokenness. Even this morning, as we've spoken the word out, that there has been a washing take place there has been a transformation take place in our mind, in our mindsets. And we thank you, Lord God, that there is healing right now. Just lift your hands to receive from the Lord that healing. We all need that healing, amen. We all have places in our heart that need a restoration, a work to take place. So Father, I just speak right now freedom in the name of Jesus healing in the name of Jesus. You are our light and our salvation. Let your light penetrate every place. Lord, illuminate every place and let there be healing take place as we step into a new year, as we step into purpose, as we step into greater power, Lord God, that there is a healing that we would not operate from brokenness. We would not operate from a place of insecurity, but a place of wholeness in Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's just sing together a little bit.
experience the nearness of Jesus. And Lord, we just, um, this morning, Lord God, I thank you for salvation, Lord God. And let's just, um, let's just pray together, Lord. We just come before you as a people, Lord God, and we just ask you that you would forgive us of our sins. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I acknowledge you as the Savior of my life. Let's say that together. Lord, I acknowledge you as the Savior of my life. Lord, I repent from all sin. Lord, I repent from all sin. Lord, I thank you that you are transforming me from the inside out. You're transforming us. Thank you, Lord. And I just encourage you this morning as we close. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to invite the prayer team up. And um, I just encourage you to, 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 if you want some prayer time with a, a leader, just come forward and receive that ministry this morning. Uh, but I believe that God's calling us to respond. He's calling us to respond. Maybe there's a response now, or maybe there's a response later for you in your own space, maybe in your own home. But I believe there is a, a response required, a response of faith. It might look like just your own prayer at home, a declaration, maybe a time of worship. And I don't know what it is for you, but the Lord is calling an action because David said, I will seek. It was an active thing. And so whatever the Lord is calling you to do, I encourage you to respond in your own way. Maybe it's lingering. Maybe it's something later. But allow it to be something special that the Holy Spirit is guiding you in. And as the lights come up, um, I just want to dismiss you and, and thank you for bearing with us. It's a bit of a longer service. Sometimes when we only have one service, we just go all out, right? We just stay forever. But uh, I encourage you, there's this, the coffee house is open and there's fellowship taking place. And um, just have a, a blessed New Year celebration. And uh, we're excited to see you guys very soon. God bless.